How's it going everyone? This is Wimbo. We are going to do another quick Blender tutorial. Today we are going to talk about Ice Cube right here. We really want to achieve this photorealistic looking Ice Cube right here. But before we re actually go dive into it, we wanted to really understand uh, what is makes Ice Cube looks real. So it, as you can see here, here are some actual images I can see. And in the photography world, the reason why a lot of uh, f images that are created using a fake ice cube is because you see the real ice cube is actually going to flow. And also sometimes it looks a little bit froggy or it's like it's just not really looked that transparent or crisp looking and like these fake ice cube and actually also when you actually photographing something involved with ice it typically melt melt very quickly so that's why we're using some fake ice cube and uh, this image as you can see here some people may think this is real ice cube but in my opinion i think this is a fake one um it's simply because the shapes look a little bit generic um but yeah but most people would not really easily to tell and also because the in interior um texture in there is have a lot of irregular shape so it's not a uh, it feels like it's very natural and real because in the real in the reality a lot of time forming the ice cube is not really that crispy uh, crispy clear like that so uh, i just want to point that out uh, so before uh, and then the next thing we wanted to go with this is actually how we model the very basic shape of this ice cube as you can see here how can we do that oh uh, well, it's, it's also very easy so what you can do you can just shift a to add a cube right and then the next thing you want to do and let me move to the side a little bit and next thing you wanted to do is you go to tap edit mode and then you are going to right click and go to the subdivide and suddenly as you hit that you're going to have a small window down here so you're actually going to increase the number of cuts to to 20 so let's give you enough geometry right here and the next thing what you're going to do you are actually going to go to the sculpt mode as it's this in this way i think this is the easiest one where, um, to use so I hit the t to open the sidebar and these are all tons of brushes uh, you can use for uh, not brushes sculpting tools that you can use basically what you can do whenever whichever you hold it if you hold a shift key and then you're basically using a smooth tool so i typically just just quickly smooth the very hard edge of the, the ice cube and to just getting some very general soft of of look of that because ice cubes is not supposed to be any uh, have very certain uh, shapes that as a as a cube, but it definitely has something bended in, and you can you can spend uh, ages to really fin uh, perfecting this ice cube, and you can even use grab tool just to grab something, pop it out, and uh, push it in, whatever you want to do, and just make it looks a little bit nicer and to do looks a little bit realistic and uh, definitely so see every because everything is in qua so uh, it's very nice to have that so i'm just going to go back to the edit mode and do a, a quick shade smooth and that's it so you can actually shrink it down uh, some way and then you can use it somewhere like that here so the one I had here is just something I made it myself. But now, so you you quickly have something that you can use for uh, as ice cube. You get that shape. That's kind of easy to do, right? And the next thing we're going to to look at it is going to be the the texture. Uh, a lot of people think, well, there's got to be some secret uh, ingredients in order to make some uh, ice cube textures and uh, shaders in order to do that. Well, technically, it's not that much. Uh, it's not very that. It's not that difficult either. So, as you can see here, uh, after I select the one ice cube, you can see here the shader, and this uh, this shader apparently is actually the one that I gave it to you guys uh, in the uh, in the previous tutorials. You can check out the real glass shader. So this is the one I'm giving to you. The only difference is part is just this kind of this frame, this group that I added on. So what I, the difference is, 
the reason I'm adding this thing on is because if we look at the, the reference image uh, in here, as you can see here, the inside, there's some kind of like irregular patterns inside. It's not just something that we want to make it looks very clear from, the, from this side to the other side. There's something going on because water and also when the your when the actual water molecules when they're keep fr uh, starting fro uh, f frozen and they just change the shape and they are creating some patterns even some bubbles in there but for the shakes of, uh, sake of uh, a shot we don't really not need to put in any bubble inside uh, but you can you can do that then and test yourself so that's why we we adding a hdri image as a texture shape, uh, as a, a another layer of texture. Well, for some of you, uh, most of you probably think HDRI usually is for the environment, and you can put that in the for lighting. But f at the same time, you can actually hook this thing into the reflections, just regular uh, image uh, image uh, image texture. So you can just do that uh, search image texture. And then you can you can put it on, and then just put a plug in the HDRI image you can download from HDRI Haven. And the reason I put another hue and saturation value, and I, you, as you can see here, I I pull the saturation to zero, so it won't introduce any um, unnecessary color on that. So if I'm actually go back to here uh, to get it to one. And you can see here, yes, there are some actual uh, uh, color casts from the HDRI, so which is not something we want. We're just gonna put it in zero. And also the value is, is something, its default is supposed to be one, but it is a little bit dark. And, and having this another one, you can actually control the reflection some in a certain level. So that's kind of pretty neat, I mean here. Uh, again, this ice cube is not super, super realistic. But the interesting part is because our human brains really trying to understand uh, the world and to categorize something that um, is look is ice cube shape. You have some reflections. You have some melting water, uh, melted water down here, and and it just people just trigger their brain to really think this is an ice cube. And if also for us, uh, for the realistic rendering. We are trying to finding a a a, a point that uh, we're trying to it's between the realistic and also beauty. That's a sweet spot, a, a sweet spot right there. So we want to make it looks very realistic, but also same times we also want to make it looks pretty. So if you this is realistic, what the ice cube like that or ice, it doesn't looks very uh, appetizing. And also most people. Do not pay a lot of amount of attention to look at all these in the very uh, microscopic way, like a CGR artist or, or photographers do. Because we are the animals that are really pay attention to details. Most people would just think these are uh, the ice cube. Another trick you can use, as you can see here, these these two images are a little bit blue because the color can really affect on the. On the coldness and the warmness. Now, uh, so in order to make this look a little bit more real, we can go to the go to the scene here. Uh, if we are actually going to start seeing the scene, so this this plane is very reflective. Basically, is it just we pull the roughness all the way down to the point uh, zero one and uh, spec uh, specular all the way to one, and the color is to to almost pure black, so you wanted to have a nice crisp look, and uh, the light is just lighting from the back end to really lighting through and bounce back to the camera, and we have a one of really good usage for pure white background uh, image when you're doing render of product, and also I have a, a tutorials about that. You should check it out. Anyway, so we have this light. What we can do here, we can simply just can change the light of the color because this is the main light and this is the only light resource. We can just uh, move your mouse cursor in here, hit hit E, short key and a shortcut key. You you quickly have a a, a, a simple eyedropper tool. So you can just pick a, a blue color. See, 
quickly you can have something going on and to adding some like a, a coldness over here you can adding uh, you can change that the way you want but suddenly it feels like oh this is can be something very cool to to look at it now it feels like oh it's feel like it feels like more like ice and also you can adding more small details on the actual ice cube just like these to have adding some drops you can either use geometry node or you can use a particle system and i also have a blender uh, tutorials about that uh, you, you can check it out you know, i will uh, i will put a link uh, next to it so that's pretty much it uh, the 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 key point is just trying to making sure the lighting usually when you're trying to lighting light uh, anything like transparent or uh, translucent you're trying to backlit because camera is right here so you want to actually light out light pass through it and to actually kind of uh, make it looks a little bit nice and brighter and it's not really like the uh, other uh, type of materials that uh, you directly point the light onto it is actually you trying to kind of light it through it or kind of making sure the surrounding environment is very important as well and you can certainly check at my other tutorials talking about the light and also how to light reflective surface items in the blender and i really hope this uh, short blender tutorials are being helpful and we can certainly hang out on my social media instagram and um, if you have any questions please leave your comments below Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.